Today let's talk about sampling in general because people seem to have things mixed up a little bit. Accurate beats. Accurate beats. Sampling is this really common technique used in music production in general. Of course used by legendary producers in hip hop, but also for early house music, jungle, drum and bass and so on and so forth. Nowadays pretty much everyone does it all across different musical genres and that's just a good thing. It's still frowned upon by some people claiming it's not an original way to make music, but you know, people will always be people, that's just what it is. Since you're watching this channel right here, right now, there's a good chance you already know about all this stuff, right? But I just wanted to make sure that we're on the same page here when it comes to what sampling is before diving deeper into the subject of how to make it original and special and unique, you know? So there are a lot of similarities between sampling and creating a collage. We're basically cutting out different bits and pieces from one piece of art and we're taking them out of their context to put them somewhere new and changing the meaning of pretty much everything. Everything gets rearranged and mixed up and flipped around and edited. Some things get taken out completely or maybe we're adding something from a different source or a new element altogether. All depending on what I want to create and communicate in my final artwork. So this collage is now slowly becoming a new piece of art made out of pre-existing building blocks. It takes a lot of skills to create something new out of something old. The more experienced you are in all this, the easier it will become. And you could develop this skill set into something truly artistic. Now, this is obviously a pretty bad collage made by someone who is way better at music than actual artwork. But I think the parallel between this and sampling holds up. If all these different elements were sounds and notes and chords and rhythms and noises that I found on old records or TV shows, oh, dismissed. or maybe places like Tracklib, Splice and Lander, I could still create something new and unique out of that too. And that's pretty much what sampling is. But what happens when a lot of people ends up using the same source material and the same samples for making stuff? Is that now the end of creativity and originality because we're using the same source material? Of course not. It all depends on you and what you make out of the source material. Just think about the musical notes that we in the West use to write melodies. In an octave here there's only 12 different notes and the possibilities are still almost endless. At least almost. Or the English alphabet for that matter. It only has 26 letters and people are still writing original books and poems and lyrics using those 26 letters. And how many recorded pieces of audio are there that could be used by someone like me in a sample based music making context? I don't know, but it's way more than 26 at least. Let's agree on that. Which means that using sampling as a technique for music production shouldn't necessarily have to stop you from doing something that's genuinely you or original or special and unique. And the sources and the numbers of samples that we have today is kind of getting out of hand but in the best way possible. More samples to the people is never a bad thing. But the problem I'm talking about here is more of a cultural phenomenon than anything else, I guess. Because the way people are using samples these days is different from what it used to be. Most of the places where you can find and buy samples and sample packs these days also has lists of the most popular or the most downloaded ones. If you're just going for that and you're using those samples in your project in the simplest way possible without doing any type of adjustments or edits at all, sure. Things will eventually become samey because we are doing the same thing. Back home again. As music producers, we're constantly getting these new and improved tools to help us edit and manipulate audio in plugins or hardware or whatever it might be. The basic ability of being able to record a piece of audio onto a sampler or a computer or whatever and having it play indefinitely, just looping over and over. That's one of the foundations of a sample based workflow and that's just the start of it. Now we can take a piece of audio and slow it down without affecting the pitch of it at all. We can also just take the vocals out of a song which is really powerful. So the possibilities and the art of sampling is developing as technology develops, which is really cool. But people used to make sample based music using just a tape recorder as well. So everything is pretty much possible, I guess. 
We're also at this strange point right now where AI, or really machine learning, can generate music for us. So I'm a hip hop producer, I'm a beat maker, and I make music using this technique myself by sampling. And for some reason, I put a lot of effort and pride into my editing process of things. I just enjoy the feeling of knowing that I cut something up real good and I made something completely new out of it. Or the fact that I edited a sample to the point where something else fits to it and two things that wasn't supposed to go together now goes together. But it's not like everything always has to become totally unrecognizable either. That's not what it is. I'm not that true to the game myself and I'm not sure that's necessarily what sampling has to be all about in the first place. I've made up all these crazy rules and principles for myself and my music whenever I make stuff for no good reason at all, I guess. It makes my life harder and the creative process more difficult than it needs to be. But on the other hand, these different sets of rules and principles is also what's keeping me from using like an Apple loop and keeping that in a project in Logic or any type of pre-made loop for that matter in any of my beats ever because I don't want to use it as it is. I need to put my own flavor to it. I need to do something about it to make it special and unique and different. Otherwise, I can't sleep well at night, you know? Just knowing that I put something on a beat that I didn't even touch and try to make my own somehow. Just for the fun of it, let's challenge myself here in my weird sense of creative integrity by making a beat in less than a minute, I guess, in Logic using nothing but the pre-made Apple loops, just to see how that feels. A new project in Logic, let's just open it up like that and switch into 90 BPM and immediately into my loops, genres, hip hop, because that's what I do. And let's just take that one. Import over there. That one. And let's just scroll our way down to... Sure. I don't know, maybe let's add... Maybe that's not gonna work, but... Sure, let's adjust the volumes, nothing more. And let's add... That one too. Over there, all of a sudden. Well. Oh my god. Honestly, what just happened here for real was that my, my girlfriend, my partner came down to the studio because what I was working on in terms of music down here sounded better than the stuff I normally do, according to her. Just right now, as I was filming this part when I made this piece of music in Logic with the pre-made Apple loops that I haven't made myself, so. Kind of makes me think about this entire video in a different way, but whatever. So the point I'm trying to make here, or at least was trying to make, is that sampling is definitely a more than valid way to produce music. And I don't care if you use samples from old records or TV shows or whatever sample pack you might find online, because as long as it feels good, it is good. In my specific case, it's just not as fun working with music like that as what I'm used to. Working with samples with a lot of edits and cuts and, you know, playing some chops backwards and changing the pitch up and down and adding effects and all that stuff. It just feels better and more rewarding in the end. And yeah, I'm old school and I'm grumpy enough to still want to believe that sampling is an actual art form and a craft that you need to practice to be good at. Just like pretty much everything else in life, things are supposed to take a little bit of time and effort and work if you want to be good or even great at something. 
Now, the audience might not always care, obviously, but you still have a passion for it. You still want to do it just because you're motivated to do it yourself, and that's really difficult to put into words. I'm gonna blame the YouTube algorithm for this, but I've seen some videos recently from music people like myself on YouTube outing producers for not doing things the right way, mainly in the dubstep scene or whatever. People seem to be downloading sample packs from the internet with these demo songs connected to them made by the actual creator of the sample pack, and they just take the entire demo song and release that in their own name, just putting their name on it and calling that a day. And to me, that's just taking the entire principle of sample packs and whatever a little bit too far. To me, at least, that means that the person who said that they made the track won't be able to make another track that sounds or feel similar or the same. So you don't really have a personality in that music because you didn't even touch it. Now, this is my source material. And without putting any of my own work into this, I don't feel like I have a lot of stuff to be proud of here. Or even if I... Is that thing right there enough for me to be proud of my work? Well, maybe. Who am I to say what amount of editing you need to do to be able to be proud of something, you know? I guess it's just a matter of personal preference and how much you think about these kinds of things. And she just became a bearded crying pirate with a bow tie, so that's at least something. From a legal standpoint here, of course there are laws and limitations and rules that applies to sampling in general, but that's not really what we're talking about here, because we're also talking about sample packs that you purchase and download, and they're royalty free and you are free to use them however you want to. My question here, at the end of the day, has pretty much nothing to do with that stuff, and everything to do with the feeling of being part of creating or making something. I find a lot of comfort in knowing that my actual involvement in the creative process made a difference. It's not just presets or pre-made samples put onto a timeline, it's something more than that. Something more involved, something more complicated, something more thought out, something more immediate or intuitive or creative or whatever. So use whatever samples you come by, but make sure to put your own flavor in there because that really matters because you are the artist or the producer or whatever like that. I don't even mind sampling the same record as someone else did five years ago and made a big hit that everyone knows. That doesn't bother me at all as long as I know that I put a little bit of myself into my creation. Again, for better or worse, the outcome is not everything, the process itself means a lot to someone like me. And I think it should to you too. So is sampling and sample packs gonna be the end of all creativity and kind of originality in music making? No, of course not. Not according to me, not by a long shot. But we still need artists and beat makers and producers who are willing to put a little bit of soul and love and passion and work into their music. You know, just to make sure that everyone doesn't use the same sample packs in the same genre, in the same tempo, always. Because that can't, you know, that just can't be the future of things. At least, that's my two cents about this entire topic. Thanks a lot for watching this video, and I know this was a little bit different, but it's cool to try new things, right? However, I hope to see you guys in my next one. Until then, hot good. Accurate beats. Accurate beats. Accurate beats.